All right, so um, on the podcast today, I'm with the current Infusion champion, S1 champion. And earlier this month, came back the new Lion Fight Women's Super Bantamweight champion. Yay! So congratulations on this epic win. You know, on our last Thank podcast, we spoke about the build-up and how you were preparing for it. Yeah. But to go over to the US to fight there for your first time and, and to, fight, to fight for Lion Fight, how was it for you? How, how, how was this victory for you, given all the other you know, your infusion titles, you know, yeah. how did this one rank amongst the rest? Um, I think the whole experience it was like crazy and amazing. Um, I, I loved it. Um, it was strange, you know, the commission there, they were really strict and, you know, I have like, not, not my rituals, but I like to do things, you know, my way and relaxed. And um, so it was hard kind of you know trying to stick to their rules and this and that's not allowed um but apart from that like I loved it and I didn't see much of America we were in kind of in the casino um the whole time the fox was there, right yeah and oh. and there was nothing like about so we we didn't even go outside so yeah. I didn't even know if it was hot or not mm-hmm. obviously we took around walked around the casino and that and um was training, um, trained twice a day. But we kind of got there by Monday night, um, had a lie-in Tuesday, trained Tuesday night, trained twice on the Wednesday, and then Thursday was weigh-in, and then obviously Friday was fight day. So I, I next time if I go, I will go er, out earlier because yeah. uh, by the last round I was knackered. I was fighting about 2, 3 in the morning our time. Yeah. Uh, and I know I went out early to, to kind of prepare for that, but there was just nothing to do at the the casino. Yeah. So me and my dad were were in bed by seven o'clock. Yeah. And in England, that's seven, eight, nine, ten. That's like midnight here. Yeah. We were trying to stay awake, but we couldn't, you know, to get used to the time difference. Yeah. But you you live and you learn. That's the whole part of it. Um, Lion Fight looked after me really well. Mm-hmm. Um, the fight was. <laughs> The fight was wicked. Um, yeah. It was proper Muay Thai. We've got good feedback off everyone off the internet. So um, the last couple of weeks when I've been back, I've just been buzzing and I'm, I'm still getting messages from people and it's um, it's more motivation for my next fight. Yeah. You know, it's all good. Yeah, so that's, what, 92 fights now, 84 victories. You know, that that's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I did the, I did the match, <laughs> don't worry. Sorry. Oh, hang on. Do it. Oh, there, there it is. <laughs> so how did that, that moment feel when Scott came over and put the belt around you? Because in the footage, you do see him, you know, a bit, you, know, you can say, you know, what a, he says to you, what a fight, congratulations. Mm. How yeah. did that moment feel? God, sorry. Um, I was just so happy that I won the way I did. You know, I think I showed the crowd what I could do. Um, it also, you know, t- to the later rounds, it wasn't an easy fight. She was crazy and kept coming at me, um, doing wild stuff. So, like, the crowd were entertained, and that, and that's what it's all about. And it, it was entertaining. It was fun. Um, you know, there was some good, good technique in the power. Um, so I just think it was a, a great fight for the crowd and yeah. me and Jerry. Yeah, Jerry Sykes, you took this fight on, yeah. on what, a couple of days notice, three, three yeah. four days notice. Yeah. How come, what happened there? So I can't remember when I last spoke to you. Did I say that I hadn't had an opponent, didn't have one? Or did I not say? No, there was there was one. There, there uh, hadn't been, yeah. Okay, so oh, they hadn't booked flights. So mm. on the Saturday, I was like, are you going to book flights? I'm supposed to be flying yeah. out Monday. And then this is when they told me about my opponent, Laura Fernandez. Yeah. She hadn't got, like, her medicals in. And they were supposed to be in, like, you know, days ago. Yeah. Um, uh, and there were some problems there. So they said, look, um, there's no way we're bringing her over. Mm-hmm. There was disagreements. So I just said, okay. Obviously, I was disappointed because I just thought that means I'm not going to fight. Mm-hmm. And then randomly they were like, here's your flights and sent me the flights. I was like, why would they mm-hmm. pay for my flights if I've not got a fight? Wow. And Scott emailed me and he was like, I will get you a fight, honestly. And yeah. I was like, he must be serious because he wouldn't yeah. pay 
for me to come and waste all that money, you know, for me not to not fight. And I met him on the Tuesday when I got there and he's like, I've got your fight. Um, I was just like, wow. Uh, And when I met Jerry at weigh-in, I just said to her, like, thanks so much for stepping in because it's just, you know, you're so close. You've done all that training Mm -hmm. and then the opportunity gets taken away. Yeah. And um, I was just so happy that she stepped in and, you know, so I could fight on that stage because it was Mm. like a huge moment for me. Yeah. So, yeah. But with 92 fights, you know, how much of your training is specifically towards one person? Or, you know, if it gets cancelled and someone steps in with, you know, Mm. four days to go, are you ready to rock and roll? Uh, Of course, I'm ready to fight. Um, We did train a bit. For Lara, we did certain techniques um, in our rounds over and over and over again. Yeah. And he'd do, uh, my dad would do what he's seen her do on video and I would counter kind of thing. Yeah. Um, the fact that I got a, a new opponent last minute, it, it you just got to get on with it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If it bothered me that much, I then I wouldn't have, have fought. I don't, I don't know. It, uh, you just get on with it, don't you? You yeah, just I mean, fight. That's your instinct to just fight. Yeah. I mean, is there anyone that you are afraid of? Um, no. Otherwise, there'd be no point me being a champion. Mm-hmm. Um, I got knocked out a couple of years ago. Um, and, uh, and I was winning the fight up until that point. Yes. And I've learned things since then. I've corrected my technique. Um, I was young and a bit stupid. And before the fight, things happened that I should have let my dad know. I was in a, um, Mm -hmm. well, not a motorbike accident, but I fell off a motorbike and had um, concussion and that. And I just wanted to fight that much that I I didn't tell my dad. I didn't even know what concussion was. I know that's that's stupid. Um, And, yeah, it just got all too much. Um, and I got caught in, in the wrong moment. So mm. obviously I want that fight and I want to mm-hmm. to win. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of time of getting it on. You know, there's a lot of politics, people wanting more money. So you just got to wait and it will happen. Yeah. I'm not scared. I'm, um, I think um, that will be the fight that, that makes my heart warm again and just yeah. like happy and content. Because everyone that, I've only lost five fights, um, and every one I've had a rematch with or or tried to get a rematch with. I'm not scared. I'm not running. I just want to fight. You know, if you beat me, fair play. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it just it just means next time we fight, like be ready. Mm-hmm. Spoken like a true champion. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, you know, my dad winds me up. He's like, oh, so and so. So and so beat this girl. You should beat her, and and things like that, you know. And he he he, he makes sly digs, and it does get in your mm. head, and it makes, it it winds me up. Like it doesn't make me train harder. It winds me up. It pisses me off. Yeah. So then I'm on it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Speaking about your dad, Mark, you know who's <laughs> been your biggest fan and you know helped raise you in the Muay Thai world. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but he's in your in your corner. Yeah. So. You know, the, the cameras nowadays, you can see them during the, the intervals. They'll go right up to the, the fighters and you get to hear a little bit of the advice that the, the coaches are given. So, you know, what, what was your dad saying to you um, during the fight? And secondly, how, what was his reaction to the victory afterwards? Um, so in, in, <laughs> in the fight, mm-hmm. we always say like, it's so strange because my, my dad doesn't have to shout when he's in the corner like he can just talk and I can hear him yeah. and sometimes when like it is caught on camera he'll say body kick and then next thing I'm body kicking mm-hmm. like I know that uh, well any fighter that's intelligent knows that whatever your corner is saying you should do yeah um you know because they can see they're a fresh pair of eyes from yeah. outside uh, and I trust my dad um, so much. So, you know, whatever he says to do, I do. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'll get told told off when I get back to the corner. Yeah. And I just remember he shouted, body kick. Yeah. And this was in, like, the first or second round. Yeah. Right, body kick. And I remember I'd body kicked a few times and my foot killed already. Mm-hmm. Like, it must have been bruised. And he's like, body kick. So I thought, oh, I'll do a left one. He's like, that's not a right body kick. Mm. Fucking body kick. <laughs> 
I was like, oh, fuck. So I just kept kicking off my right, even though it was bruised. Yeah. Just so he um, didn't shout at me more. And then, um, yeah, I just went back to the corner. He's always relaxed. He's never stressed because then I'd be, you know, worrying. Um, just says, keep doing what you're doing. Using the teeps, the body kicks. You don't like the body kicks. Uh, just builds me real confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and then go, and then I go back out there and then it's the same the next round kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and with winning, winning the lion fight, like you always... He always sees the bigger picture, you know. He's like, this is a massive opportunity for you, but also mm-hmm. not just your fighting. Um, you know, it's America. It's huge. Yeah. Um, so I hope he's just proud, and I think he is. And and he tra- he travels all these places with me, and I think mm-hmm. he secretly, like, he loves it, and he, he loves telling people about it and stuff. And, and when I see him talking about me, that's when I see how proud he is of me kind of thing. Maybe he he doesn't... I wouldn't say he doesn't tell me, but he doesn't... He likes to keep me grounded. Yeah. No, that's, you know, excellent coaching and excellent parenting, you know, if I may yeah. say so. Yeah, so he's also. Awesome. What, what does Scott say afterwards? And, you know, what, what, what have you got going on with Lion Fight? Um, so he said... Uh, they definitely want me back. The reaction, because um, obviously it was live on telly. The action on so uh, the action, the reaction on social media was um, awesome. Um, it was proper mood tie and entertaining ladies fight. Um, so the next kind of step is going back to lion fight, but it will probably be after Christmas time, just because I've got a few fights. I've got. One in October, two in November, mm-hmm. and then obviously there's not much around in December. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully their first show of 2017, I'll be on it. Yeah. Fingers crossed. It, the fight went the full five rounds. And yeah. I've got to say, you know, you know, Pat, even Pat Militic, she kept shouting it, technique, technique, technique. He, you mm-hmm. know, you're especially the first round and you know the couple first rounds your the, the technique was it was an amazing display of kicks teeps and uh, the effectiveness of your of your knees in the clinch when you know you raise the leg and it smashes in from the side and almost yeah. like it comes back down it, you can hear the sound in that in and every time you clinch you, you know you guys clinched you know her, you can see that her knees were not as effective, but yours comes round the side and smashes in. Yeah. And it's a lot of times in the clinches, it's ineffective knees and it's almost just a time wasting until the referee stops it. But yeah, the sound that was coming off her, her body every time you came down <laughs> with the knees, it was, you know, it was a true masterclass of how to use the knees in a clinch. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> My dad always says, um, you know, the more you exaggerate your knees, the more you bring it back. The, the bet well not all the better that it looks but it does look better for the judges and that's what they see mm-hmm. um but also the power you generate because yeah. there's no point clinching and doing these little shitty marching yeah. knees there's no point mm-hmm. and i've always thought that people sometimes don't like Thai boxing because they don't understand the clinch or they yeah. get bored mm-hmm. uh, and i always keep that in mind and obviously try and entertain the crowd so yeah. you you got to Sometimes you can only win the fight, you know, by clinching or that's where you're strong. So you'll just clinch the whole fight or whatever. Yeah. Um, so you've got to keep it, you know, entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't really like clinching in the gym either, but I seem to be strong in fights. But maybe it's because I clinch with all the lads in the gym. Yeah. So it makes me stronger. But like I said, you know, your second and third round, I've been telling my friends, you know, that's... <laughs> You know, if you really want to see a good demonstration of how to effectively use a clinch, then to watch this fight. But there was, so not only the, the, the knees in the clinch, but there was the walking knee that you did so effectively. And, you know, yeah. you, you don't often see that. But yeah. because, And also, because she, she kept coming forward. I mean, throughout the whole five rounds, you're, you're hitting her with head kicks, with knees to the body, but she kept coming <laughs> forward. You won't give up. Yeah. Because, what's, you know, what's wrong with these people? Yeah, I was watching it with my wife earlier and she was like, you know, popping on the edge of her seat and it's like, yeah. but, you know, your technique and your experience really shone through. And, you mm. know, it was a great example of the diversity of, of attacks that you have for someone to keep coming in. You had your front teeps and you had your, your front yeah. kicks 
that kept that kept keeping her away. Then when she did come through, you're able to come in with the clinch and then really do some damage with the knees. Yeah. See, she's she. The first thing you when you put a name in in Google, she's a, a boxer, a world champion boxer. Yeah. Um, so I was like, fuck, I'm going to get knocked out. Yeah. Like, I hate boxes. I hate being punched. Everyone knows. It's Muay Thai. Like, let's just kick. Mm. Um, but, um, yeah, that's why my dad was like, you know, the teeps keep her at bay. She can't get punched in. Before she gets close, mm -hmm. teep, 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 teep. Yeah. So that's just the kind of th what was going through my mind. Mm -hmm. Um so knowing she was a boxer and how good she was, I knew I wasn't really going to knock her out. And she's quite an an older lady in the sport, mm -hmm. not old lady, but you know she's older, so she's got woman woman strength. Um, so I knew she was going to be strong. Like yeah. four days notice, it doesn't matter. Like I mm -hmm. just knew she was going to be on game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But in the last two rounds, it seemed that you know. Her cardio didn't stop; it kept going, yeah. and I think in the fourth she she hit you with a couple of shots, and one looked like it kind of stumbled you a bit. Was there ever I a think... moment where you where you almost went down? No, like in the fight, no, and looking back, no. Mm. I am so clumsy, and obviously I was starting to get tired, so I think yeah. my legs were just going, and I was mm. like just falling because yeah. otherwise I would have got a count. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. But I think also, mainly the fifth round, mm -hmm. um, she was fighting. She just had real fight, but she was also in desperation because she knew the only way to win to was, yeah, yeah, or yeah. maybe, well, not even give me a count, but, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what she was doing. And if you <clears> watch <throat> it, most of the stuff that she was doing, like the spinning elbows yeah. and the wild punches, they were hitting on my gloves. They didn't actually... Yeah hit my face, do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought I did quite well with tying up her arms in the clinch as yeah. well. You know, obviously, usually I'm just left to do what I want and, and mess around in the clinch, but I knew she was going to elbow because, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, when you're when you're losing or being beat, beaten, you're going to try and cut them. Yeah. Um, so I thought I did quite well because we've not really been practicing that or doing that at all mm -hmm. in the clinch. I don't know if it's just a natural thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, mean, I could I could feel moments when she was trying to elbow, but I had a tied up kind of thing. And how was the cardio and and being gassed in the in the in the fifth round? It was yeah, it was the fifth round, mate. I was uh, my legs were wobbling, yeah. and I don't know if it was cardio or if it was down to. Well, because uh, you've been constantly hitting her the whole previous yeah. four rounds you know yeah that but also like the jet lag and i was just knackered by then like yeah. i'd had enough yeah um and then obviously she was going mental coming forward i was like god I don't need this shit man just make yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just leave me to it yeah but it was you know, she was relentless and you know what, what an awesome performance that she put you know the heart that she showed yeah you know and i love the fact that at the end of the fight you know you gave her a big shout out you know, you, you showed some love. You showed some love to the, to the I guess, the American viewers. Yeah. And, and that, went, ran, that went down really well, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Um, but I, I felt like, you know, I won the fight, but also she, she won it. Like, mm -hmm. she, was so, she was so good. Yeah. I felt she stole my limelight. Yeah. <laughs> she, you know, she stepped in last minute. She put on a good performance. She stayed in mm -hmm. there. And then the mm -hmm. last round, she went crazy. She's mm -hmm. American. They loved it. Yeah. And I was like, fair on you, mate. You could have made it a bit easier for me, but mm -hmm. cheers. But you know what? <laughs> I think that fight made it better for you as well. Because if, if all the rounds had gone how the first couple of rounds had gone, then, you know, it would have been, all right, you know, Iman came. She's more ex had more fights and she won it. But the fact that yeah, she started coming back and started creeping in and, it, you know, her... Her drive just keep stepping forward. It didn't stop, and it came yeah. strong. And you know, as you were clinching in the fourth and fifth, she was kind of throwing you off. She wanted that distance to try and get that knockout. The, the punch, yeah, yeah, to get, to get, the to punch. get that punch. And you know, and because of that, it, it brought it, it woke. You know, it got the crowd really excited. And me as a yeah. viewer, I was like, you know, on the edge of my seat. Yeah. But even you know, every time she stormed forward, you know, you were there. You were composed. You did look a little bit gassed, but you know, you kept the distance. Got the yeah. clinch. Got the knees in, and it was. That that's really what made it the the great fight. 
Yeah, cheers. You know. So both Kieran and Phil, I spoke to them, you know, we've watched the fight and they're the Muay Thai Grand Prix co-founders. You know, we spoke about before how, how they much prefer watching you fight representing. <laughs> how, they, how they, you know, they prefer you fighting full rules Muay Thai. And even after mm-hmm. your fight, you'd mentioned it, you know, this yeah. is, you know, you're, you're coming back to it. So, you know, you know, is, is this the direction that you want to go in? Did you, did you enjoy that? I mean, I, you know, from, from a neutral perspective watching it, it really is such a, a, a fun thing to watch. Yeah. I think, um, you know, obviously I was, do, did Muay Thai growing up. I was in Thailand fighting full Thai. Yeah. Like, it was normal. But then in, in Fusion came along, more opportunity, um, you know, fighting more regular. There wasn't a lot going on in the UK and mm. people didn't want to bring other people from abroad for me. Yeah. So that was the kind of direction I took um, in yeah. Fusion. And, and they've, you know, they've... Um, done well for me got good fights got them regular um and then I had a few I had a fight in China and that was different rules and then they asked me to to go glory and that was different rules Mm. and then just when I was fighting I felt like I was winning yeah but that wasn't enough like I wasn't performing my best to know to to what I knew I could do Mm. I was just I think it's constantly thinking about all the different rules Mm. like you think it's easy but it's it's not Um, especially um, when we first started off in infusion they had judo so I had to go judo once a week which (laughs) god it was me me only day off and I had to go frigging judo yeah these throws and then it was dangerous as well Mm. because if you landed funny Mm -hmm. one fight I I landed funny and I was injured Mm -hmm. Um, and then just doing all these sweeps and then in glory, you can't even kick, catch the leg. If you catch yep. the leg, you get fine. It's like, bloody hell, I'll, I'll go in with no bloody money. Yeah. So yeah, it was just, um, and then this opportunity with Lion Fight came about and we were like, well, great. Like, why would we turn that down? We get a bit of, um, best of both worlds, you know, still on it in fusion, but just, let's just stick to Muay Thai. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and fight on infusion now and then. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. And it's go, it's going well so far. You know that last fight, I was a bit happier in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, could have used more. Could have done more. Could have done this. Could have done that. Sure. But that's that's as always. You've always got to improve. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But I definitely felt more happier in myself. Did you come away with any injuries from that fight? Um, my foot. My right foot was bruised, like it was huge. Mm -hmm. And then I had a few bruises on my shin, but oh my God, the flight, Mm -hmm. my legs, it was like I was pregnant, honestly. My legs like just filled up, what's it called? Water retention. It was so bad, honestly. Like Mm. it was so sore. Both my legs were huge. Yeah. Um, And it took a few days to go down. I don't Mm -hmm. think I got home on Sunday. It didn't go down properly Mm -hmm. till. Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Um, right, but I but... can't fit my f- shoe on. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I took my shoes off on yeah. the plane. Yeah. And then when we landed, I couldn't get my shoe on. Yeah. Well, but but nothing lasting, though. No no lasting injuries. Oh, right. no, sorry. I, I just thought... Well, well, <laughs> that was huge to me. Hello, I had huge... Well, it's feet. crazy that you just had one fight in September and now... In you know next month October you yeah. you've got another another fight on the fifteenth yes. Muay Thai Grand Prix at the O2. Yeah. Yeah. So so how's the so preparation I, going for that and what are you expecting from that fight? So I had had a week off after that fight, um, just chilling. Uh, as soon as we got back, I was back to work. Yeah. Um, in the evenings, I just went around my mate's house, chilled, um, and then the Sunday I was back on it even though I wasn't sure if I was fighting on Muay Thai Grand Prix because I didn't have an opponent yet. My dad was like, just train anyway. You know, we're training for a fight. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. And I, and then as, as the closer it got, I was like, he's not going to get me one. He's not going to get me one. And then he texted me on Monday saying, got you on, blah, 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 blah. Um, so now I'm buzzing on it now, training. Mm-hmm. Not that I wasn't before, but now I've got something, you know, to aim for. Mm-hmm. Um, selling tickets. Um, 
yeah, and I'm excited to be back in London. Like, I love fighting at that venue. Like, it's one yeah. of the best venues. Of, Class venue, yeah. Yeah, one of the best. And and then the fact that I'm at home, you know, everyone always gets behind me. That's the thing about Muay Thai. Like, I'm not from London, but I know that all the other gyms kind of get behind me and support me. So, like, yeah. that's kind of, it's uh, it's wicked. Yeah, well, you know, the best in the world. So it's... <laughs> You know, we're excited to have you there. And then again, you. October 15th. So so I guess our fans and our viewers can go to Muay Thai GP. They can get tickets. They can get information. And if they want to reach out to you, um, they can follow you on Twitter and Facebook, right? What, what yeah. What's your names? Uh, at Imam Barlow on Twitter and on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, and Facebook, it is Imam Pretty Killer Barlow. Press like. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, I've got over like ten thousand likes now. Yeah. Well, that's, like, that's yeah. That's it. like I went before the, it started for like America. Yeah. I had like eight thousand, yeah. and then like the whole like lead, leading up to it, yeah. and then after now I've got ten. Way. No, I mean, you know, you basically there. There's big things gonna happen for you. You know, you're... Yeah, I hope so. But it's just, like, fun on the way, you know, and, mm-hmm. and receiving all these messages off people. Some I don't know, some I do. Mm-hmm. Um, people wanting seminars. Um, a guy from Spain messaged me asking for a seminar. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Like, mm-hmm. You can start just... making some serious money as well. Well, I hope so. Get a nice car for once. Um, yeah. Two questions left. All right. Oh. When, when you saw the announcement, Charlie Peters, Liam Harrison... Yes. What, what oh, was your reaction to that? Um, wow. And it was on Muay Thai Grand Prix. Yeah. Um, I like Charlie. Like he, I've known him such a long time. He's lovely. I also know Liam. I've known Liam <laughs> since I was younger, mm-hmm. um, training out in Thailand together. Um, I just think it'll be a great fight. It's yeah. great for the sport. The best um, of British, in a way. Yeah, yeah, and it will draw the crowd in, and that's what it's all about, mm-hmm. you know. It, everyone will be talking about that fight. Everyone will want to see it. Mm-hmm. Everyone will come. So if I'm on the show, it's even better. Yeah. And Kieran! Yeah. Yeah, that'd just be buzzing to fight on that as well. Um, yeah, so I'm excited for that. So even if I'm not fighting, I'll definitely come down. All right. Um, and again, I asked you it before, but I'll ask it one more time. Mm-hmm. So what, what matters most to you in life? For you, what, what makes a happy life? What make well? What matters to me most is to be happy. Yeah. Um, just to have my family and my friends and good food. <laughs> and just to be fit, healthy, and happy, um, and inspire people. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It's strange when people say, you know, you inspire me, mm-hmm. um, and you get messages, but. That is, that's just crazy. Like, if you can inspire people, then that is amazing. Yeah. And, then, and then in another sense, they inspire me because their messages are just like, wow. Yeah. It makes me train harder. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and people don't all have happy lives. So if you can inspire someone mm-hmm. a little bit and they're going through a tough time, then that's wicked. Yeah. It's fun for everyone to be happy, have a happy world. Yeah. But I suppose you can't be happy if you're a loser. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, le- you learn from your losses. You get yeah, stronger. and then you come back and you'll be happy. All right, so catch your man versus Fonda Dickin, Muay Thai Grand Prix, October 15th at the O2, at the O2 Indigo. All the best and again, um, congratulations. World champion and, um, you know, can't wait to see you next month. Thanks! <laughs>